Hey guys, it's Ranj again, your favourite TKI who teaches you in a way like no one else. So I haven't released a video in a long long time, as I've been very busy with other things, such as a new Puli course that I'll be releasing, more on that later. Ok now we're going to go through a question that focuses on the 1 in 60 rule. This question's in the IASA 2021 question bank, and is a bit more simple than the other questions I've gone through before. On my YouTube channel I want to go through a broad range of questions rather than focusing on the so-called hard ones all the time. We are given a row from a flight plan and are told that after 50 minutes of flying with the plan TAS and true heading, we actually end up 3 nautical miles north and 2.5 nautical miles ahead of our expected position. Now I want to know what the true heading should be in order to get to where we want to go. When we are given the fact that we are not at our expected position, it would be a good idea to try draw a bird's eye view of the situation to help see what's going on. This helps bring all of the information together in one concise image. Ok, but where do we start? Well, we are going from A to B. What direction do we need to go in order to do that? We are told the track is 270 degrees, so that means we are flying westerly. And therefore we can put A here, and B here. We also see that the total distance is 50 nautical miles, so we can put that as the total length. I'd now like to make a quick pause to this question to let you know about a Puli course that I've now released that is available for absolutely free for beta testing purposes. The option to access this course for free will not last long, so please fill out the application form in the description as soon as possible. A lot of questions from general navigation, flight planning, meteorology and instruments use the flight computer so you will need to become a master with it. Don't get too excited, but it will feature detailed explanations and video walkthroughs on how to solve every ATPL flight computer related question. It will feature things that no other training provider has done before, for example flowcharts that can solve any question from the banks. This will put the fear of what to do for hundreds of questions behind you. I am beta testing this course and would like your help. So if you would like to run through the course for absolutely free, please fill out the form linked in the description below. Be as honest and descriptive as possible with your answers for a higher chance of selection. Thank you. It says the time for the leg is 23 minutes. Just to make sure that's the duration and not just the time at which the leg started, we can check if it's right by using the speed and distance. Speed equals distance over time, and time equals distance over speed. So 50 over 130 equals 0.38 hours, which when pressing the DMS button gives you 23 minutes just as expected. We can't put the heading on right now as we don't know where the aircraft actually is. We can put the speed, I'll put it up here in the top corner. And we can see that it's coming behind us and, well, slightly to the right. So let's take a look at the other information we are given. It says that after 15 minutes, we are 3 nautical miles north and 2.5 nautical miles ahead of our expected position. Well, we can now use the total estimated time of 23 minutes to our advantage now. So it wasn't a complete waste of time to calculate. So looking at the track, as 15 is over half of 23, and we know we are even further forward and up north from that, we can put on the drawing that we are around here. It doesn't really need to be accurate, it just has to be, well, above the track in the northerly direction really. So in drawing the aircraft, I'm first going to draw a line parallel to the original course, because we are heading 275 degrees. So I'm just going to do 5 degrees from our original track, which is 270. Just to make it a bit more clear, you can take the angle with respect to north like this. What we want to find is the heading we need in order to go down this path and get to B. These questions however assume that the corrected heading and the corrected track are the same, so that makes it easier as well. To find this, we need angles. We don't have any yet, so we need distances to work out these angles. So now we're going to put in the other distances relative to the expected position. We calculate these from the flight plan as this is what was expected. 
So 15 minutes at a ground speed of 130 knots. We arrange the speed distance time formula. To give us the expected distance to be 32 and a half nautical miles. As we know, the total expected distance and only have one expected distance left to find, we can do the total, subtract a 32 and a half, subtract another two and a half to give us 15 nautical miles, which is what we expected to have left. Cool. Now we can work out the angles. The whole ethos of this question is to be able to do the maths in your head without a calculator which is why we use the 1 in 60 rule, rather than using trigonometric functions. Back when I was in school, we were taught to memorise some of the outputs of the trigonometric functions, but, well, here it's going to be a lot more difficult. And the questions are designed anyway to be suited to the 1 in 60 rule. So we want this angle here. As we know the heading is currently 275 degrees, we just need to minus this angle and this one here. Splitting this angle in two is helpful, which is another reason why I drew this line parallel to the course. Okay, the first angle is pretty easy, as it would just be the difference between the heading and the track, which is 5 degrees. The second one we can work out by using the alternate angle theorem, also known as z-angles. We we'll use that to work out that this angle and this one will be both equal. You can see the z there. To work out what this angle is, we use the 1 in 60 rule here, where we divide the off-track distance by the larger distance and then multiply the fraction by 60 to give us an angle of 12 degrees. This means that the total angle is the sum of the 12 and the 5, which gives us 17 degrees. And in order to now get our corrected heading, we do our true heading minus these two angles, which gives us an answer of 258 degrees. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more things like this, please like and share the video with your buddies and the communities you are within. I want to spend more time doing things like this so I can release more videos and improve the quality of my content, but can only do that with your help. Thanks again and see you soon.